is up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the brand new 2022 nissan Sentra, courtesy of younger nissan in frederick maryland for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below and so we are in this one today because there's actually a couple nice new changes for the 2022 Sentra. this is a good looking compact car and you get double the powertrain warranty if you buy it from younger Nissan. I always want to give them a little pitch there. And so essentially in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering feel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are several different trim levels for the 2022 nissan sentra first one being the s starting at nineteen thousand five hundred and ten dollars sv for twenty thousand five hundred and seventy dollars sr for twenty two thousand one hundred and a new trim for the 2022 model year being the sr midnight edition starting at twenty two thousand seven hundred and ninety five dollars and by the way for reference we are in the sv trim level today but regardless of trim level that you go with power plant on the center is going to be the same powering the little beast is a two liter direct injected inline four cylinder putting out 149 horsepower at 6,000 rpm 146 pound feet of torque coming in at 4,000 rpm power sent to the front wheels through a cvt zero to 60 according to car and driver comes in at approximately 9.2 seconds with mpg numbers coming in at 29 in the city 39 on the highway at least if you go with one of the non-sr trim levels if you were to go with the sr that will reduce it slightly to 20 in the city 37 than on the highway but either way taking regular unleaded fuel and so but before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in our center i did want to mention the drive modes and so there is normal that is what the center of course defaults to there is an eco mode by the driver's side left knee and there is a hidden sport mode located on the shifter essentially it's a horizontal line that does not say sport it essentially gives you no direction as to what it actually is but that is what the sport mode actually is you just press that button essentially but they will adjust things like the shift points and the throttle response though but having now said all of that and gotten all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find it straight away here let's put the center to the test in sport mode and let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed all right good a spot as any let's hit it All right, it did all right. I mean, it does feel like zero to 60 in approximately nine seconds. Not the quickest thing in the world, but it's not that bad. And quite honestly, that sport mode did help a little bit. You can definitely feel the difference as far as the uh, simulated shift points because it is a CVT after all. But that's the other thing. It kind of felt like a traditional automatic almost with this CVT. They did a very good job with the CVT for it being a CVT, if I'm being honest. So I definitely don't mind that. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. So you will get front disc rear drum brakes if you go with the S trim level. But if you were to go with the SV like we have today or the SR trims, you will get four wheel disc brakes, which is going to be quite a difference from that S trim level. 60 to zero stopping distance, at least for the SV and SR, is going to come in at a very, very respectable 114 feet. And as far as that braking feel goes, it's brilliant. I think I said, I might've said that in my last review of this car too. Like this thing has an excellent braking feel. And again, the 114 foot number is very impressive. A lot of times in sedans, you're gonna get the 120s or even upper 120s. So 114 feet is 100% on point without a doubt. But anyways, then touching on suspension and handling up front, you're gonna get an independent strut type front suspension in the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars. As far as ride quality goes, it's actually been perfectly fine so far today. I've had no issues there as far as steering feel goes it's freaking one of the best every single time i review a sentra having reviewed all the other compact cars in its class i would easily say the sentra has the best weighted steering feel it definitely leans towards the heavier side of things which kind of gives the driver that feeling of being in a sports car or a car a lot faster than this car actually is it's an amazing steering feel that's one of the best parts about the center in my personal opinion without a doubt so i love that as far as the uh, cabin noise goes i mean i've been going pretty slow in my short test drive here today so so far not having any issues there either actually and then touching on visibility i can see perfectly fine out the back so 100 not going to have any issues there either but that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2022 
Nissan Sentra. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2022 Nissan Sentra. Forgive any kind of wind noise what we might have in this video here. It's kind of windy, but this finishes in rosewood metallic in case anybody was curious of our exterior color name. But let's go ahead and start up front on the Sentra here. Nissan V-Motion front grille, of course, coming standard. And that actually comes with active grille shutters, meaning they're going to open and close dependent upon the engine cooling that is needed at any given time. Halogen headlights then coming with the S and S V trims. That is currently, of course, what you guys are looking at right now. Automatic feature coming with those as well. LED headlights coming standard then with the SR trim level, and they will come with LED daytime running lights and fog lights as well down below, which I think would look pretty darn cool. And as far as that front grille and accents go, with that new Midnight Edition I was telling you guys about, you're actually going to get black badging and a black V-Motion front grille if you were to go with that particular trim level. So I did want to mention that, but overall, very nice looking front end. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side of the Sentra. All right, and so now since we are around to the side of this one, chrome belt line molding, I think you guys can see that. That comes standard for all trim levels. You do have a floating roof line towards the C-pillar in the back there, of course. When it comes to the side mirrors, they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors, unless you go with the SR trims, then they're actually going to be gloss black side mirrors, in case you were curious about that. And if you were to go with the SV trim level and up, you're actually going to get heated side mirrors and LED integrated turret signals then coming with the SR trim level only. Then take a look down at the wheel setup, 16 inch steel wheels with covers for the S, 16 inch aluminum alloys then for the SV and 18 inch aluminum alloys then for the SR trim. But that rounds out the side profile here. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. And so now since we are around to the back of this one, this is probably my favorite angle on the Sentra. It has a very nice looking back end here. Rear spoiler can be had with the SR trim. However, it is optional on the other trims, but it does come standard on the SR at least. You will find trim level badging back there as well. So in case you're wandering onto a Nissan lot and you're curious what trim level you are currently looking at, that is the easy way to go ahead and tell, of course. Body color rear diffuser, you guys can see that towards the bottom there. I always like that on Sentras. It makes it look so dang good. And of course, to the side, you will find a single exhaust outlet tucked away. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. now since we are around back of the center when it comes to opening that rear trunk there's a few different ways to go ahead and do that there is a button on the key fob there's a button on the trunk itself and then there's actually a button by the driver's side left knee then as well once opened up cargo capacity comes in at 14.3 cubic feet if that was not enough space there is a 60 40 split meaning the rear seats do fold down for quite a bit of extra space then if you needed it also back there of course there will be cargo lighting but if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor you're actually going to find a spare tire and you could probably store a little bit of whatever you want to store around that spare tire back there as well then make our way up to the rear legroom that is going to come in at 34.7 inches so for reference i'm an even six feet tall this is how much space i had in the rear seats there rear center armrest with cup holders does come standard there is one rear usb charging port available back there so that is pretty cool i'm glad that is there however kind of surprised to find no rear ventilation though unfortunately but you probably don't need it in this size of a vehicle but anyways then make your way up to the front seats manually adjustable cloth seats coming with the s and s v trim levels sport cloth seats with orange stitching then coming with the sr trims and there's actually an option for a quilted leather available for only the sv trim i'll put a picture of that on the screen now but that is a pretty darn cool look so definitely an option i personally would consider heated front seats also going to be optional on the sv and sr trim levels and overall as far as seat comfort goes i gotta be honest they're not that bad i, I know it's just manually adjustable cloth seats but they are pretty darn comfortable i wouldn't have any issues taking this thing for a long road trip then take a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is leather wrapped for the sv and sr trims only heated is going to be optional on the sv it doesn't come standard on any particular trim level though and i do like the flat bottom to it then as well then make our way to the startup let me first start by showing you guys the key here essentially all of your buttons are on one side of the key You've got your nissan logo at the top lock unlock and that button to pop the rear trunk of course but it is all keyless entry with a push button start that comes standard across the board and there is a remote start that is going to come on the sv and sr 
are. So we do have that today. But anyways, I'm just going to go ahead and put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just in front of the shifter. And so once started up, tachometer is all the way to your left, speedometer is all the way to your right. And there's a fairly large digital display then front and center to control what is on that digital display. There are steering wheel mounted controls found on the left side of the steering wheel, giving you things like your outside temperature. There is a digital speedometer if you wanted that. I know that's pretty popular. Usually tire pressure for each individual tire. You got your radio information when you need your next oil change. The list goes on. So pretty much everything you could possibly want on the digital portion of those gauges. But then making our way to overall interior quality, a power moonroof is going to be optional for the SV and SR. Does not come standard on any particular trim level though. Overhead sunglass holder, however, does come standard on all trim levels. There's actually then a new package option I wanted to mention. It's called the all weather package specifically for the SV. It goes for $590 by the way, but that actually gives you heated front seats and a heated steering wheel as well. So definitely not a bad option to consider, especially if you're in Hagerstown, Maryland, because it does get quite cold here, but not so much today, which is kind of nice. But anyways, dual zone climate control coming with the SV and SR. There is an optional auto dimming frameless rear view mirror with home light controls going for $440 if you wanted that. Interior ambient lighting is going to be optional with the lighting package. And overall, I do like the contrast stitching that goes just above the passenger side glove box. I like the Audi-esque circular air vents front and center here as well. There is some rubberized storage just in front of the shifter to put your phone so it doesn't slide around. You have all of the charging ports you could possibly want in front of that being a regular phone charging port, USB charging port, auxiliary port, and 12 volt power outlet then as well. Just beside the shifter, you have your dual cup holders with a carbon fiber-ish look to it. And I think that's pretty cool. Little bit of storage behind the shifter and within the center armrest. Actually a good bit of storage within that center armrest for a compact car specifically. So it is definitely nice to find as well. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the tech on the center here. So a couple different options when it comes to the tech. There's a seven inch color touchscreen display coming with the S trim level. However, if you were to jump up to the SV or the SR like we have today, you're gonna get an eight inch color touchscreen display. So slightly larger display there. Bluetooth and audio streaming coming standard either way. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay still coming standard either way. You gotta love that. You can check out some of your driving statistics up there, of course, as well, along with your radio information. And by the way, when it comes to the sound systems, there's several of them. Four speakers is going to come with the S, six speakers coming standard with the SV and SR. That's the one we have today. And then there's actually an optional eight speaker Bose sound system that is going to be available. But like I said, we got the six speaker sound system with us here today. So what do you say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today. And Let's test out the clarity of this one. It's okay. It's okay. It's just okay. I mean, the bass was all right. It pretty much sounds like every other six speaker sound system out there. Not the best six speaker sound system I've heard, but definitely not the worst either. So it's pretty much average. It's what you would expect a six speaker sound system to sound like. But anyways, last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the center in reverse, you will find a rear view camera taking up the entire screen, which is definitely a good thing. That doesn't always happen, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so IIHS top safety pick if you go with the SR trims only because that gives you the LED headlights, of course. But front side side curtain airbags do come standard driver and passenger knee airbags up front as well. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, like I said earlier, but also coming standard across the board will include a forward collision warning system, autonomous emergency braking with pedestrian detection, lane departure warning, rear automatic braking, a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert. I always love that. Rear parking sensors, a driver retention monitoring system, high beam assist, and then lane trace assist as well. Then if you were to go with the SV or SR trims, that is going to add an addition to that adaptive cruise control then as well. And so overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the Sentra, excellent steering feel. That's probably, that's always the big win in my opinion whenever I drive the Sentra. Comparatively speaking to all the other compact cars out there, this thing has the best steering feel, at least when it comes to compact cars. Also, excellent braking. 60 to zero in 114 feet is excellent. I can tell you guys the braking feel is also very wonderful on the Sentra as well. Great starting price point. This thing is very affordable, about as affordable as you can get these days at least. Quilted leather being available is pretty cool if you want that upscale treatment, that Nissan Max treatment in your Sentra. That's nice. As far as room for improvement goes, wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay. I think it's the next stage up for the Sentra. I think that would be pretty cool. 
Also, I do think they need to ditch the CVT, although it does simulate an automatic pretty darn good. You can definitely still tell it's the CVT, and it kind of takes a lot of that emotion out of the drive, especially with that steering feel. If I were Nissan, I would definitely go after driving emotion with the Sentra because it has that potential. And I think digital gauges will be nice as well. I know Nissan can do what they do in their other vehicles. Anyways, that is about it for this one, you guys. Let me know what you think of the Sentra in the comment section below. Feel free to follow me on social media. If you wanted to see what's coming next on the channel, before it actually gets to YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button. If you're into new car reviews, that is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.